Other interesting business news, you have Spotify to raise prices yet again. And it's a good friendly reminder to click that subscribe button on the Spotify or the Spotify and give it a five star review or four star review and just give me some feedback. Let me know how to do better or three stars or two stars or one. Right? I forget if it's Apple or Spotify. Someone did give me one star review without any details, which I mean, at least tell me what I can do better, but I partially digress. This brought to us thanks to Andy Bink over at Fox 16, which they specifically say, quote, Spotify raising premium plan fees, how much and when it will impact you. It's one of those fun websites, the more pop-ups than you possibly count. Now in terms of getting to the super nuts of the situation, they note that current customers will see the subscriptions fee increase in July. They'll also notify those being affected in the coming weeks or just tune into the show or share it with your friends. They note that Spotify's premium plan will not cost $11.99 a month, increased from $10.99 for an individual plan. Premium Duo will increase to $16.99 per month, up from $14.99. A premium family is rising to $19.99, up from $16.99. The plan for students will remain $5.99, which, again, I'm not sure if you just take a screenshot and show them, but I'm surprised they don't have a, an option for, like, college graduates with debt, because that's most of them, because most college degrees are woefully inept and a terrible return on investment and usually don't get you great jobs. But nevertheless, yeah, all these companies are being squeezed, and... Spotify doesn't make a lot of money, relatively speaking. They're it's one of those things where if you actually look at the finances of these companies, which is, I mean, all these streaming platforms, they're struggling because they don't own the music rights. So every time you pay them the subscription, most of it goes directly, or rather, more accurately, it goes indirectly to places like Sony and Warner Brothers, where they own the they actually own the rights to most of the music that you and I know and love. Forget it, at least Sony paid seven hundred fifty million dollars for half of Michael Jackson's catalog Q four last year. So it's one of those instances where. Spotify is making, not making all this, you know, enormous profit to help grow and invest the company. And yet they're kind of spending, they are also spending a lot of money to get these exclusivity contracts with personalities or more accurately podcasters like Joe Rogan, which perhaps probably, that's probably the only profitable thing they've done in the past couple of years. I can't help but think, how many people tuned into the Obama podcast that they paid so much for? Maybe 18 people? Well, maybe 23, let's be optimistic. But... It's going to be a tough year for streaming companies because, again, most of that company is going back to the publishers or, you know, the actual you know, people who own the rights to it. And I can't help but think, eh, it's going to be a precarious year. And, again, they also had the free offering, which, I mean, my three cents, I think that's the best ROI because, you know, you just have a pop-up like pop ad. That's what I used that back when, um, what was it? Yeah, when Joe Rogan got that exclusivity contract with Spotify, that was the one reason I signed up for Spotify. That's what I used personally. And as far as I know, in terms of the commercials, there's the pop-up ad. Then every once in a while we have one that's actually played throughout the show, but it's not it's one of those things where it's not unpalatable. So for me, I don't see much value personally getting the premium solution or the premium package of Spotify. But let me know if you're already paying for Spotify, would you be willing to pick up a couple bucks more to keep it going? Is this kind of your tipping point? Because again, a couple of these are going up to about twenty dollars. Because again, you have to pay you have to pay the good old taxes on it. I mean, market, in terms of marketing, it's good. They always have it end to 99 cents, but people psychologically think it's lower when really it's not. But let me know, do you actually pay for any streaming services in terms of music and podcast? And what's the price point per month where you just say, not worth it, I'll just use the same version or go to an alternative source of actually listening to it? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your coworkers, tell your friends, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.